Hello everyone and welcome back to a new tutorial. It's Sibo Yahya from VR Division. Today we're going to practice making something beautiful. Franz Sylvester Architectos are one of my favorite architects. I love the minimalist style they have in their architecture. And as an artist, every time I see something beautiful, I want to practice my art, my 3D modeling skills, my lighting skills. I go to a website like Arch Daily and I look for something that inspired me and I try to make something similar to it. So in this tutorial series, we're going to make the fourth room by Franz Sylvester Architectos, and I'm going to count on these images we have from Arch Daily to achieve that. First, we will start with the 3D modeling in a tool like 3ds Max. You can follow along with any tool you like. And after that, we will prepare the project to be exported to Unreal Engine. And in Unreal Engine, we're going to assign materials, add some lights and make things look nice. Without further ado, why don't we get started? All right. Now, when I want to start a new project, I always use a tool called PureRef to collect some of the images that will be useful for me in the production process. And the reason I love this tool is because you simply click and drag. Ah, does it work? Yeah, there you go. It's amazing. You just click and drag and you have the images. Now, this is a low quality image. If you want a higher quality image, you may need to click, make it load, click and drag. And if you zoom out, whoa, we have so many icons that we don't want. So let's right click, open new tab, click and drag. There you go. I don't want to take so many images. I just mainly want a couple to give me the mood of the architecture here. So opening a couple of nice images here and the floor plan. Now, I will just click and drag these images. In Chrome here, I press Ctrl W to close these tabs. So every time I click, drag, press Ctrl W to close and easy peasy. I press Ctrl F in PureRef to make my screen large and I will right click, go to Canvas, no, Images, Arrange, Optimal. And the shortcut for that is Ctrl P. It will just arrange all the images for us. I pressed Ctrl S to save this, and this is the time to set up our project location. You should never save your project on place like the desktop. Always have some sort of folder structure. So here in my projects folder, I made a project called fourth room, and I'm going to make a couple of more folders here. Zero zero for references or source files, the second folder is for production. So I have my folder here called fourth room. I usually make more folders inside that folder to keep things organized. The first one is for my source files, anything I get from my client or from my mood board or all the source data that I need to finish the project. The second one is the production folder where I have my 3ds Max or Substance Painter or Unreal Engine stuff. And here is the final package. Every project I make have this sort of structure and I keep developing on this. Now I'm going to save here. So fourth room board, I'm saving my scene and that's it. I'm going to right click, save this image in the same location because we want this image as a guide to do the walls. All right. So I'm going to click show in folder. And I'm keeping things very simple, by the way. Feel free to trace these lines in a program like AutoCAD. And I'm keeping things very simple, by the way. Feel free to track these lines in a program like AutoCAD. But all I'm going to do is just to click and drag this image into my viewport and model the walls by eyeballing. So before we do anything in 3ds Max, if you are using 3ds Max, there is an option to set active project or create empty or create default. I always go with create default. Let me show you something. In the production folder now, there is nothing. So I'm going to make a new folder, call it Max Files or Blender Files or whatever program you use. And I'm going to copy this and go here and I'm going to select this as my folder and this empty folder will have more empty folders but they will be very organized we have scenes we have auto backups we have archives and feel free to use or not use these 
What's beautiful about this now, since every time I go click file, open, it will locate that folder for me. And I'm going to click save. There is no need to save your project at the start, but I'm just keeping things organized. So base. Now, what I'm going to do is to get the image we saved. I will right click properties. We need to check the dimensions. So it's 1414 by 1000. That's important for the aspect ratio. So I'm going to plane, just create a plane, press Alt W to maximize my viewport. And I'm going to bring that image and drag it here. I know in Blender it's much easier image to plane, but it is what it is. So here I'm going to put 1000 units and here I'm going to put 14 by 14. And I'm going to the top view, press F3 to change the shading. I'm going to press G to remove the grid. And I'm going to make this easier to see. So I'm going to convert this to edit poly. And I'm going to add a swift loop. So I will go to modeling, swift loop. And I will select the edges. I'm not sure if you can see. I'm going to press F3. There you go. Add one here, one here, one here and one here, then I'm going to press 4, polygon mode, select all these extra faces that we don't want and delete them for now. We can do the same here, very nice. Before we start modeling, we want some reference point to understand the scale of the project. So let's assume, for example, the thickness of this wall could be like either 15 or 20 centimeters. So if we go to standard primitives and create a box i'm going to do this so here the width of the box is 10 so let's make it like 15 and we need to select the plane press r to scale and scale this is not the best way but it works there are more accurate ways if you want to get the exact dimensions to the millimeter you can do that but for today's tutorial we're gonna keep it like this keep it simple all right, now our scene is set up. Just let's make sure everything in the middle. So please don't do your model here. Always stay within the center of the world. Okay, let's press save. And let's create some walls. To create some walls, I'm going to click here on my layers and I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going, well, it's just walls for now, make it my active layer. And this here, we can remove it and make new wall. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I will take, click, drag all the way to here, for example. Then let's assume the height is like 280. And the width here is 606, so we can make it like 600. And the length is 30, so we have nice rounded numbers, easy to model. So you can, Trace the same, so like doing this and then releasing. So here we have 25 centimeters, or you can simply press right click, convert this to edit poly, but you may have noticed that I did that without right clicking and click edit poly because I have a shortcut for that. In 3ds Max or any program I use, when I notice I'm using the same operation so many times, I always set a shortcut for that. Even the hotkey editor where I put shortcuts, I have shortcut for that. So if I press six on my numpad, I will open the hotkey editor and it will just make it so much easier for me to set shortcuts. And here you can search for like action, convert to edit poly. I have shift C, that's my personal preference. And I have shift S for swift loop. So shift S, I can add this loop and right click I would select this and press S to snap on this point, then minus 25 on the X axis. I can press 4, select this face, press Shift E and extrude. So we can do the same here. You can extrude by Shift E like this, or you can click on extrude and set exactly how much you want to extrude, which is in this case 15. And let's do this. So increase this to get it somewhere here, let's say this is 185 or 180 and let's make 10 or 15, do another extrude 
to this point. So that's like 80. And let's assume that the height of door openings are around 210, right? So what we can do, I can press Shift S to add a swift loop. So let me first go to the edge mode, then press Shift S. I will set this to the zero point, And then on the Z axis here, I can press 210 and I can select this edge here. I can click extrude. Let's say we want the opening for the door to be 80 or 90. Yeah, 80 is good. It's small sliding door for the bathroom. There are standards for this you can Google. If we need, we can make it a little bigger. So now going back to the top view, another 80 or yeah, 80 is fine. Then 15 and then I'm pressing Alt middle mouse button to orbit my camera. Select these guys here and I will extrude and I press S. No, not detach, S, then move and snap to this point. And if for any reason your snapping is not working, just make sure we have the same settings as me. So if you right click on the snapping options here, you will open the grid and snap settings. And my favorites are vertex and midpoint. So I do that. And here, let's do another extrude. S to snap and snap it on this face. Later, just so you know, we are going to detach these from each other because when you are modeling for a game engine and in this case Unreal Engine and you want for Lumen to work as intended, we should not have this type of convex meshes. Imagine now once we do the whole house, it's gonna be like really complex in terms of, you will see actually, just just make just so you know the reason I'm modeling like this is because I'm going to detach things later okay so here this wall is smaller than the one here if you go to the top view like this one seems like 15 yes this one looks like a 10 so let's give it a 10 I'm going to go box again I love boxes click drag and extrude and press s to snap to the same height give it width of 10 and let's give it length of 110. So it's like nice rounded number. And let's see the distance from here to here. Let's just make it also round number. So that's 90 here. So it starts here and this one starts here. And press on the box, shift C. That's my shortcut to turn this into edit poly. And then click on extrude. I don't want that, I just want nice little simple extrude like this and then click here again and extrude one more time all the way to this point so let's say 440 430 looking good and you can repeat the same of course it would be so much easier if you trace these lines in a CAD tool but we're not here to do easy stuff today we're going just to have fun 20, 180, 280 for this pillar, okay? Here we have a window, here we have another big wall. The rest are here. I will stop the video here and I will see you in the next one where we'll continue working on the walls of this apartment. Don't forget, if you found this stuff so far useful, please let me know if you want me to cover something specific. Also let me know. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.